It's been a year. It's been an entire year since the Sonic movie came out. Forget Valentine's Day. My only Valentine's this year is the Sonic. <laughs> In all seriousness, it's unbelievable that it's already been a year since the Sonic movie came out. It feels like just yesterday I was literally at the cinema watching the movie for the first time. Being very excited but being very cautious on my expectations for the movie itself. And excuse me if I end up repeating some of my criticisms and praises. I have made like a couple of Sonic movie videos, but it's one year later. I want to celebrate because I think the movie genuinely deserves it. The biggest takeaway from the movie for me right now is that it is by far my favourite Sonic product to come out since Sonic Generations. Sonic Mania was pretty great, I thought it was too safe, I thought it was really fun but it was just all old zones and like gameplay we've already been accustomed to, there was nothing super duper ambitious about that to me. But Sonic being on the big screen in his first live action movie, that's pretty ambitious in of itself, even if the storyline and everything was very basic. The very premise of Sonic in the real world is a very ambitious one that could have gone very wrong and almost did go very, very wrong, but didn't. It ended up working surprisingly well, actually, because the movie became the fastest selling video game movie ever and it still hasn't been topped and who knows when it'll be topped. Possibly with the sequel? But I remember first watching the movie and I left the cinema feeling pretty good. I was happy that the movie didn't turn out to be a dumpster fire. I was very happy with Sonic's characterization. But then after watching it again, I ended up enjoying it even more than I did the first time round. So on the first time round, I would have given it like a 6. Second time round, I'd give it like a 7. It's not like a, a massive difference, but when you're watching it, and you are actually paying attention to everything. You notice all the lines and like how well the dialogue is actually written, especially for Jim Carrey as Dr. Robotnik. There's so many quotable lines for him that I quote on a daily basis. It's great. And Sonic as well. Like, what more can I say about Sonic? Ben Swartz kills it as Sonic. I'm so sad he's not going to be voicing Sonic in the games now, but at least we'll still have him for the movies, the sequel. He's by far one of my favorite Sonics ever. I would probably put him like side to side with Jason Griffith. He just encompasses that raw excitement, that positivity, not cockiness. Like he is, he does have an ego to him, of course, but it feels a lot more genuine than let's say Roger Craig Smith in the modern Sonic games. It feels more down to earth. It feels more like Sonic is just excited and he wants to do things and he wants to help people and he's inspired by other people. And that's just encompassed throughout the entire movie. Right from the very beginning when he's helping that little turtle, that was cute, that was adorable, and it really shows Sonic's nature, and I love it. Some complain that Sonic is a bit too needy in the movie, I of course understand that, but I feel like it was a good idea to have some sort of character growth, some character progression from beginning to end of the movie. And I think something like Sonic wanting to have friends and wanting to be liked by more people, I think that is perfectly suitable. My issue with it specifically was the execution. Sometimes I feel like it was too in your face, like, I am alone, I want friends. Like, it felt like it was way too on the nose. It should have been like more subtle, more cleverly written into the story. But in terms of the actual premise itself, I think it's a good one. I was happy with it overall. There was that one part when he's in the car and you're like, this is a bit, a bit of a turn off. But luckily it didn't last very well. That, that lasted like five minutes maximum. I thought that was gonna be like half the movie. That would have sucked, that definitely would have brought the movie down, but that didn't happen whatsoever, so hurrah. And overall, Sonic in general, yeah, he is fantastic. His design is excellent. The Sonic movie design is easily one of my favorite Sonic designs ever. Like, you look at the renders that they use for posters and everything, he looks so cool. He is such a cool character. I got the Steelbook version of the movie not long ago. And the cover of it looks so badass. See, it's even with his two separate eyes, it looks like Sonic. Like it looks so much like Sonic. It's the coolest thing. I, I can't I can't gush enough about the Sonic movie design. I think it is a top tier. Like the fur looks excellent. His mouth, just everything, the, everything, the eyes, just, it's perfect. It, it's like almost a perfect design. Even the blue arms. Changing the blue arms looks weird. Blue arms looks better, which is so weird, but it just does. Probably because I'm accustomed to it, but yeah, the blue arms, definitely. It makes, I feel like blue arms makes more sense than anything. Your arms are attached to your body. Why wouldn't they be the same color? 
Like, humans don't have a different colour of arm to their skins, why would Sonic? So, yeah, it makes sense to me. I know that I've just rambled on for two minutes about Sonic's arms, um, but it looks good. It's an excellent, excellent movie design. I can't get enough of the renders. I, I can't wait to see what they do with the sequel in terms of that. Dr. Robotnik, excellent. Uh, I, I do have my critique that he is a bit too much like Jim Carrey and not like his own character, but it was still very entertaining. He has so many quotable lines. My favourite one being confidence, a full substitute for intelligence. I don't know why that is such a funny line. I love, oh, good morning, my rural chum. Ah, <laughs> uh, mister. Dr. Robotnik. <laughs> it's so funny. I don't really have too much to say about Dr. Robotnik. He's kind of like Jim Carrey. Um, I like the egotism that he has. I think that, again, maybe could have been written more cleverly, but there are a lot of funny jokes with that in mind. And that whole characterization of Dr. Robotnik being like, thinking he's better than everyone else. It's like a stark contrast. Again, Sonic, who is wanting to be liked by everyone else. I think that's pretty cool. It's a pretty cool dynamic right there. And I want to touch upon the human characters because the biggest thing that people would say against this movie all the time was the fact that why didn't they just make it all CGI? Because I actually think the human characters aren't bad either. I think they're pretty good. Whether it be the side characters like Crazy Carl and uh, the, oh my god, I mean, this isn't really hard my case, I don't remember the, the characters. But when, when Dr. Robotnik calls the guy useless, <laughs> that guy, he was good. And then I thought Tom was good as well. And Maddie, I thought they were both really good characters. And they felt like actual real people. Unlike Detective Pikachu, where the characters don't feel real at all in the slightest. These characters did. I bought the friendship between Tom and Sonic. Yeah, Tom is a generic name, blah de blah de blah. I thought he was a really good character, and I wouldn't want them gone for the sequel. And that is why I'm a firm believer that they should stay in the whole human world thing. They shouldn't just get rid of all that, because the human characters do help Sonic. Sonic has had humans for almost its entire longevity as a franchise. Ever since Sonic Adventure, there's been humans in these Sonic games. So I don't know why suddenly in the movie, it's like meant to be this really jarring thing. Sonic has done it plenty of times. Sometimes it's worked, sometimes it hasn't. And I think in the movie, it did work. So I'm very, very happy with it. And it's really hard to believe that at one point, everybody thought that the movie was just a complete hoax. With the old design and everything, people thought the movie was just going to be this big cash grab. They didn't care and they just want money. I feel really sad for everybody who worked on the movie during that time. Because after seeing the movie, it's very obvious that they really did try to make a good movie. They want a Sonic to be a cool, relatable character again. They want it to make a really fun, family movie. They succeeded, and that's what they were trying to do the whole time, and people thought they were just trying to cash grab for the sake of it because it's Sonic, make him a laughing stock, then just release the movie, but the end. No, now we have a sequel coming, because the movie was actually good, and people liked it, and Sonic was appealing. It would have been really sad, because Sonic's character is so good, it would have been so sad if they wasted that on that old design, because nobody would have liked it. I still stand by the fact that the movie still would have been good with the old design, but man, would that design have taken away a lot of the charm of the Sonic movie? Absolutely. The movie wouldn't have been nearly as good, but I still think it would have been a good movie. But there's so many close-ups of Sonic in the movie that it's really hard to believe that they went with the old design with all these close-up shots that they're editing. They're like, yeah, this looks good. Kids won't be scared of this. They'll be excited. Look, it's Sonic. It's unbelievable to think that, and I'm really glad they changed the design, man, because now all the work everybody did for the movie isn't undermined anymore. We can now see that they tried, and that makes me very, very happy. And we have the sequel on the way as well. We're going to get Tails. That's not a spoiler anymore. Delicious showed the Tails on the 2 logo. That's not a spoiler. I can't wait to see what they do. Who are they going to get to voice Tails? Are they going to get Colleen? It doesn't look like it because they're getting popular actors to play other characters. So it doesn't really feel like they're going to get Colleen to play Tails. But I would not be mad if they did. I would be fine because Colleen is an excellent Tails voice. As long as they did the character justice in the movie and didn't make them shit, I'd be very happy. Hopefully they get someone who is very suitable for Tails, I'm sure they will. I'm sure they will. They got Sonic. They got Ben Swartz and Sonic and it was the best choice ever. And I would take him for the games and it's not going to happen. And that makes me really sad. I wish it would happen, but it's not going to. 
And again, this is my favourite piece of Sonic media we've had in 10 years. Sonic Generations came out in 2011, 10 years. So this is why it's such a big deal for me. This is why I'm making this video. This is why I bought all the merch. This is why I always talk about it and quote the movie. Because it's so good. It's like the one thing Sonic has had that I just like. There's no negative feelings towards it. I just like it. I like the movie. I like the character, the story, the lore they set up at the beginning of the movie. It's really cool. That's actually new stuff. New stuff with the rings. And you've got the Echidna tribe trying to take Sonic speed. That's so cool. You've got a long claw. Like, all of this new stuff. And it's welcome new stuff. I'm totally happy with it. And I hope they build off of it in the sequel. And that lore stuff was definitely the most ambitious part of the movie, for sure. Like, that's just genuinely, like, new stuff. Nothing that, like, normal CGI movies do. I don't really know what else to say about the movie, I just, I really, really like it. Uh, maybe for the sequel I'd hope for better music? The music's not bad in, in this movie, it's, it's just really forgettable. Like, it, it is, it does have some heartwarming music, you know, like, but it's nothing I would ever, like, properly listen to. I'm hoping when the sequel comes around, they actually make, like, a soundtrack. They don't even have to get crushed for it or anything, they don't need to do that. I just think they need stuff that's more energetic, more guitars, stuff like that. Things that people associate with Sonic would be very welcome in the sequel, for sure. I think they can do it. They had the Emerald Hill music in the trailer, but I doubt that means a single thing. They had Green Hill Zone music in the trailers, and that appeared once in the movie. So I doubt that really means anything. So that would be one of my biggest hopes. But the biggest hope for the sequel, really, and I know this isn't meant to be a sequel video, I just want to get this in here really quick, is that I really hope they don't alienate their audience. I don't want them to start putting in a trillion Sonic things in the movie. I want them to focus on the relationship between Sonic and Tails, their friendship. I want those characters to build together. I want Sonic to inspire Tails, or vice versa. It'd be really cool. It'd be really inspiring. It'd be really relatable. That's what I think they should do. And uh, we know that Knuckles is in it. I'm really hoping Knuckles is joining Eggman, and he's going to be a villain for most of the movie, because that would tie into Sonic 3, and it would allow them to focus on Sonic and Tails more, and then for Sonic 3, movie 3, they can then put Knuckles in. Uh, so, yeah, I just wanted to get in there quickly. Overall, movie's great. Sonic movie is great, and it had a lot of effort in put into it, a lot of heart, a lot of passion, and it turned out great, and it sold really well, and they deserve every single bit of praise they got. They deserve all the money that they got for the movie. Delaying it, like a genuine delay of the movie. Like everyone thought it was gonna be like, it was planned all along. No way, dude. Like you watch the behind the scenes stuff and everything. You see those old ass renders. They would not do that for a hoax. Not in a million years. They delayed the movie to make it better. It did well. They deserve it. Sequels along the way. And it's made Sonic look better again. Seeing the movie posters, seeing Sonic in the public, was like one of the coolest things I've experienced as a Sonic fan ever. Sonic never gets that sort of attention, ever. Sonic has not been that popular in a long ass time. I would argue that Sonic hasn't been as popular since the 90s. And genuinely, that is how long I would argue that. The movie was like, it was huge. Massive, massive thing. And so, if Sega can just capture that, the essence of the movie, and like, they make these top tier games, like, excellent games, and they gave a new face to the brand, then maybe people will trust it again, and the franchise will be saved. Because I don't want it to just be, oh yeah, the movies are excellent, and then the rest of the brand kind of sucks. No, unify it. Make Sonic the whole thing amazing. Make the whole entire franchise, brand, every piece of multimedia thing you've got, make it all fucking top tier quality. Only you can benefit from that, Sega. It benefits you, it benefits us, it benefits everyone. It's a win-win scenario for every single person, so get on it. And with all that said, that is everything I've got. Let me know what you guys think of the movie in the comments below. Did it get better for you after a rewatch? Do you think it's still meh? And do you think it's better than Sonic Mania? <laughs> By better than Sonic Mania, I mean, did you enjoy watching the movie more than playing Sonic Mania? I'm not saying to directly compare them one to one, but when it comes to products, you can enjoy one over the other without directly comparing them. And I know I enjoyed watching the movie, 
more than I did playing Sonic Mania. So there we go. Thank you for watching. I just want to end on that. And that's it. Peace out, dudes.